they did this first movie, which is a nice sort of small kind of adventure movie. Then it's like the eighties. Oh yeah, let's come on. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Sincast, presented by CinemaSins. All right, everybody, welcome to the Sincast. This is Chris Atkinson from CinemaSins, joined as always by the voice of CinemaSins, Jeremy Scott. Howdy! Mm-hmm. And from Music Video Sins, Barrett Share. Yo, yo! Ah. Yo, yo! Yo, yo! I'm giving peace signs. Ah, yo, yo, ma. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going back on our road trip. Road trip. Oh, shotgun. On the road again. The most time-honored tradition of all. The road trip. Oh, the places you'll go. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. We are going to Washington after we went to Washington D.C. We were really taking a long drive. That's what I was about to say. You, you guys who don't know America, <laughs> this is a long drive. This is <laughs> this is from coast to coast. Yep. Wow, that yeah, it's not like Florida to Washington would be the the longest. Yeah, but it's close. It's up there. Yeah, yeah. it's up there. Be a good couple few days, mm-hmm. depending on how many times you stop. Have you been to Washington? Is Seattle in Washington? <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Seattle. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> then yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, that's no different for me and the the live thing. Like I love it in People versus Larry Flint. <laughs> Where Ed Norton's talking about who's the guy? (laughs) Well, that's why I didn't say anything because I was like, if I said that, he would be like, "Oh, come on!" I know. I I was genuinely that was one of those rare times. Was genuinely like, "Wait a minute, what is his name?" And forgetting that his name is in the goddamn title. Um. We're going to be going to Washington State, and uh, the first movie is uh, such a winner. <laughs> 88 Minutes with Al Pacino. Oh, yikes. Uh, this movie, they had so much success. He and John Avnet, the director, they went on to do Righteous Kill right after this. Uh, um, so 88 Minutes is one of those where they try to make the movie the exact time that is on the it's like Nick of Time, where mm-hmm. they try to make the the movie in real time. Mm-hmm. So if you've spent an hour and a half, that's how long they've they've been running around subways and stuff. Um, and I don't remember too much about Eighty Eight Minutes. I remember that I did not like it at all. It's got a five point nine on the IMDb. The conceit is that he, uh, so of course he's a forensic psychiatrist, mm-hmm. as everyone oh, is. Yes, yep. psychiatrist. Psychiatrist. He can prescribe um and uh he's also a professor and one of his former students dies and then one of it he gets a phone call saying you have 88 minutes to live Mm -hmm. and so he's got 88 minutes to figure all this stuff out and there's a lot of weird contrived like cat and mouse double cross things and none of it makes sense it's got 2007 so i guess it, it's past when they were like up and commerce but alicia witt and lily sobieski mm-hmm. um and it's it's a trash fire all right yeah well, I, I will know to avoid it <laughs> yeah i i just yeah i don't remember anything you i mean you i think you said enough about this movie mm-hmm. actually because it's uh, yeah i remember watching it and just going mm. i like i was the, excited about I like it. concepts like this yeah. i like the idea of trying to fit things into this you know it's 88 minutes so the movie's got to be that long too but uh, they they've rarely made one that's good. I I was excited for Righteous Kill. Now listen, late stage Al Pacino movies haven't been home runs at all. If anything, mm-hmm. I mean, I think he had come off of Angels in America fairly recently before this. This was 07. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, decently. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but I was excited for Righteous Kill. Had an e- interesting concept. It had De Niro and Gugino and Pacino. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but it was also a trash fire. They, I don't it it's so easy to fuck up these movies apparently. Mm-hmm. Uh and it's also easy to make them law-abiding citizen by like doubling down a little bit on the crazy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. so uh, yeah, but they missed the mark on this one. Uh here's a movie that um maybe I'm both happy that I haven't seen <laughs> and probably I should have seen The Accused. Oh yeah, this is a a movie where Jodie Foster 
is at a bar and then gets gang raped mm-hmm. and then there is a, a whole either a trial afterwards mm-hmm. and that's all i know about this and like that's not something that's ever been like an appeal to me but i fear this movie's great it is it, it's more of like it's not a necessarily a courtroom drama because the the courtroom stuff starts like at the beginning and at the end it's kelly mcgillis i think is the lawyer and she uh she either is a prosecutor and gets these guys off or with a really light sentence or she doesn't do well for uh for Jodie Foster and so but Jodie Foster obviously is irreparably like harmed and traumatized by this and she doesn't give up she says no we we need this to go further and pushes Kelly McGillis to kind of come around and serve what the limits of justice uh for for these guys mm mm-hmm. And I, I, I remember that it doesn't have a sparkly, happy ending, nor should it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it, it, it's overall like a satisfying ending for a certain uh, perspective. It's it's dynamite. Now, the content obviously is difficult, but it's a great movie. And Ooh. Jodie Foster won the Oscar for this, too. This was her first. Was it her first Oscar? I think this is the first one she won. And then Silence of the Lambs was yeah. her second uh but uh yeah it's a movie that's it's i that's one i saw at a it, going to blockbuster a bunch it was always there it was always you know out of my reach because it was an r-rated movie mm-hmm. and then now as i got older there's there's just never been a reason to go watch it but yeah i've always heard it's really good uh then there's air bud hey. that took place in washington huh it did uh, right. yeah the, the family moves from like uh new york or something like that to washington there's, i don't think i ever saw this no oh, really? but there's like 14 of these fucking movies there are oh my god i, I think wonder, it's actually like six or seven let's see air bud series uh, of course they could have a lot of offshoots it began in 19, uh, 1997 was air bud then golden receiver was 98 <laughs> i'm not going to take you through all of them one, two, three, four, five. There are five. Okay. But it seems like there's more. It does seem like it because I think they, there's either they've made spinoffs or they've made, there's other people who have made Airbud type movies. Yes, Golden a dog. Receiver. Yeah, Golden Receiver. Uh, Airbud's delightful. I saw, I mean, let's see. I was, I was a late teenager, mid to late teenager when I saw this. And uh, it was, it was adorable. Yeah. The dog is actually trained in real life to play basketball mm-hmm. like he he hits it up and, and banks it in and everything i don't know if he would actually make a team like he does in the movie no he would not <laughs> oh i think he would make it <laughs> no uh, i think um i think uh, <laughs> the ghost of kadeem hardison would make oh, yeah. the team before air Bud. that's right you're probably right uh, or, or flubber <laughs> yes that's um, adorable then there is Antichrist. Oh, yikes. Oh, my God. What, what, a, what a crazy lineup so far, Yeah, man. no kidding. This is Lars von Trier. It's Willem Dafoe and uh, Charlotte Gainsbourg. And they lose a kid mm-hmm. at the beginning of it. And the whole movie after that is this, maybe this self-emulation type of, like, their guilt has driven them to all sorts of really horror-esque things horrific things you've seen this right i have is this a good movie oh my god i don't know have you seen seen this man that there are there are three friends i know who would tell you unequivocally yes and i struggle with this one this one is it's i mean it's it's a tough one to say it's good right it's crazy because this is lars von trier did a depression trilogy right he Mm -hmm. did I think this was the first one, then yeah, Melancholia. Melancholia, and then Nymphomaniac. And I actually really like Nymphomaniac Volume 1. I do like Melancholia a decent amount. This one, just because he he goes deep, and God bless him because somebody needs to do this, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody needs to probe like the the limits of psyche and in a plausible universe, too. The kid falls out the window. He's two years old, a toddler or something mm-hmm. like that, while they're having sex. Yeah. And so they blame themselves not only for not paying attention to him, but seeking pleasure for themselves while their kid is running amok, right? Mm-hmm. And so that manifest that guilt manifests itself sexually. Yep. And you're right. It 
it's almost impossible to watch more than once. Mm-hmm. It's almost impossible to watch once. Yeah, they 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 do they go through so many things in this that are just it's 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 extreme and with a purpose. But mm-hmm. yeah, you can't do this. You can't watch this movie to yourself. You can't do this to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's a theme of the movie. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, there there are some out there who will consider this genius, and then there's others like me who are like, eh. I understand both sides too, mm. uh, because I I really like Lars von Trier, von Trier. Um, but Man. yeah, you got to have a strong stomach and a strong mind. I know it's entertainment; it's just a movie. But there's certain things that you want to put yourself through, and there's certain things you don't want to. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if you are of that persuasion that you want to to put yourself through this, God bless you. It's beautifully shot. It's well, very well acted. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's challenging. Yeah uh then there is black sheep this was the follow-up for chris farley and david spade from tommy boy and uh i'm trying to remember that that this is farley the black sheep in this oh yeah yeah his brother is running for office okay and his brother is played by somebody too it's not tim daly but it's (laughs) it's tim matheson Matheson, Matheson. i was about to say (laughs) um and they're trying to keep him under wraps during the whole and this is i think pretty well a a light spoof of bill clinton and roger clinton yeah yeah in the sense that roger clinton threatened for a little bit there to derail bill's (laughs) campaign so i think that was light inspiration for this yeah yeah did you like this movie well, I mean, no. If you put this and and Tommy Boy in front of me, I'm choosing Tommy Boy every single time. Yeah. Um. But you know, it's not without a few laughs here and there. It's also one of those classic. You could show me one scene from one movie, and I don't know if it's from <laughs> which one it's from. Yeah, it was. We struck unexpected gold with this pairing and Tommy Boy. Let's just repeat. Yeah. And it didn't work for everybody because yeah. it wasn't as funny. You know? Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not nearly as funny. And it's one of those that go. It's almost. Yeah, it is almost very much like Tommy Boy because it's a road trip yep. movie. Yep. And there's all these you know wacky situations, but they didn't. They weren't able to recreate the mac the, mm-hmm. uh, the magic on this at all. Uh, then there is. Oh, I haven't seen this Captain Fantastic. Oh, uh, I complained about it. Um, I liked it. It's a good watch. I just didn't like how it ended. Yeah, uh, but there are a lot. Seems like in the last five, ten years, we've had a lot of these quirky, hippie, woodsy, non-traditional parenting family dramedies. I feel like there's been six of them. You think there's a lot of these actual families out there? Maybe. I mean, you mentioned the the documentary of the real people. Yeah, that are the out there. the surfwise. I mean, Wyoming and Washington and the rural areas are sparsely populated, so I guess it's possible that you could come upon villages like this right oh, sure sure i mean i guess i liked the movie i just I, I thought it ended a little too happy for it could sort of hints throughout the film at a little bit of a darker future didn't you say they end up going back with the uh, the grandparents for a little while into yeah. a traditional house yeah and then he comes and breaks them out well how did they adjust in po- the movie poorly really yeah so they they prefer the lifestyle that they're getting with him. I don't think the movie's necessarily saying that either. Although they embrace it more than a traditional one. I see. But I think honestly, I'd have to go back to it. I'm going to talk out of turn, but I think one of the things the movie has to say is that nobody really wants to be raised the way their parents raised them. They're not given a choice, right? Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so. That's an interesting. I, I'm sorry. I'm trying to wrap my head around this movie because that's the central thesis. But the movie is wrapping it in kind of a saccharine, saccharine. By the end of it, of thing, yeah. Right? But like halfway through, they're like rock climbing, and one of his kids like breaks his arm. Oh, and he like rubs some dirt on it. Kid kind of like forces him to get through it and hmm. pull himself up to the top. He's a bad father, <laughs> which is why I'm so troubled that the movie sort of makes this happy ending. Mm. And and I and I think I think it's better explained by people who like it that he has learned from his mistakes now. Whereas I didn't necessarily see that earned as much. I can't wait. I, I really want to see this. It's really good. Yeah. It's really good. Really good watch. Uh, then we have Charlie St. Cloud. That's uh, Zach, <laughs> Zach Efron. I think Amanda Crew is in this. Yes, she is. I haven't seen. I never saw this. I remember it coming out. And I remember it think, thinking it was like another Nicholas Sparks type of thing. It's not Nicholas Sparks, but it. it, uh, it ben it, Sherwood. I yeah, think. it yeah. is based on a novel, but it, uh, it, it reminded me of that. I. I have you seen this? Yeah. Okay. He sees dead people. 
Does he? Yes, he does. Oh God. Oh God. This movie is so talk about saccharine. Like it's this should be a lifetime movie. Like uh, his he he gets recruited to college and uh, he wants to play catch with his with his little brother every day in the summer before he goes off to college. Little brother dies mm. and but. It's a, he field of dreams him back and like he comes back and they fucking like throw the ball a bunch and then he he starts empathizing with other people in the community. Spoiler, they're all dead too. Damn. Yes. So he can talk to the the dead and and put them to rest. He's Charlie St. Cloud. That sounds Scene. like Passengers, the Anne Hathaway movie. Oh my god. Because they're all walking around <laughs> trying to figure out what happened. That's just their way of processing until they move over on into... There's an Anne Hathaway yeah. Passengers movie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Patrick Wilson's in it, too. <laughs> I happened on that by accident. It's, it's not good at all, but it seems like every time I want the Chris Pratt Passengers, like that's what that's I'm on. in the mood for. Yep. It's the other one that's on. Oh, man. Uh, this, is, uh, this is bad. This is, uh, this is... Okay, do we agree that Zac Efron can probably act now? Yeah. Like, he's probably got range, right? Yes, but I unfortunately don't think this Bundy movie or whatever, he's. I don't think that one's going to do it. Why do we think that? Because I think that, too. Uh, what, what evidence has he given us? I think it's... Neighbors? It could, it could just be the fact that he's, he's self-deprecating enough in those comedies that it makes it look like... May, I mean, we haven't seen him do something real stretched out yet. Yeah. So, it, I, I, I think a lot of times when we see somebody not take themselves seriously in comedies like he has... There's this idea that maybe there's something a lot more there that we're we're seeing that maybe he doesn't have. I don't mm -hmm. know. We just haven't seen that yet. Um, so I think he can. It's just that he's not getting the right things right now. Well, but if was, he this, can't get the right things, then who can? Seriously? Yeah, exactly. Seriously, <laughs> he certainly can't act in this. Or, or he doesn't act in this one. Josh <laughs> uh, then we have Dancer in the Dark. Uh, this is another Lars von Trier, and I haven't seen this. This is Bjork in it, right? yeah man um <laughs> she wore swan dress to the oscars yeah there you go uh this is i think this is one of the only lars von triers i haven't seen oh really yeah yeah it's uh <laughs> shocking it's a little depressing yeah <laughs> uh, this is the i okay i don't know everything about the the background of this movie but i think he was borderline abusive to get a a, a certain performance out of bjork mm -hmm. who to my knowledge had never like acted in a film before mm -hmm. um she is terrific in this by the way she plays a woman that uh that's just about blind or losing her eyesight mm -hmm. factory worker or something like that and her son has the same condition and it's accelerating so she wants to get money for him to to have an operation to to stop this or reverse it and there's, you know, a whole thing about a set of circumstances where she comes upon some money and someone is killed. She is charged with that murder and sentenced to be executed. Mm -hmm. And it goes from there to one of the most beautiful and heartbreaking and satisfying endings that you'll ever see in a movie. Mm. Um, it's, uh, it's, again, a different aesthetic, uh, but it's a dynamite performance. It's overall, I think a good movie it may not it's not in the upper echelon for me of his stuff mm -hmm. uh but the performance itself and the method by which the story unfolds i think is is worth watching i'm trying to figure out when lars von trier became that filmmaker who wanted to piss off his audience a lot and <laughs> and i don't know if this is because he did breaking the waves before this and yeah. he did uh dancer in the dark and, and these things have some of their own like you know either depressing things or they're provocative things in them or whatever but it may be dogville where he first starts getting into that let's let's test the audience's will mm -hmm. and uh and he gets off on that basically you just hear him oh he totally does yeah talk about this he he actively he likes someone hating his movie more than more than he likes people liking the movie a lot of times i think and there's something to be said about that man like like push boundaries it's who's the gaspar noe the the kind of the opposite of this that i don't really like his movies mm -hmm. i appreciate him though and the the other guy michael haneke is another guy yeah, who does yeah, yeah. that did the funny games movie and all that and he's he's another one of those that tries to challenge the audience basically i dare you to like this movie a lot of times <laughs> you know? it's like uh billy from montourage right <laughs> yeah, yeah i think he is i yeah. think yeah 
then we have oh this is a classic dante's peak oh well i've saw it one time yeah one I, time i am team dante's peak way over volcano yeah well, i've seen volcano three times and i agree with you yeah <laughs> um yeah um i'm trying to remember what what is pierce brosnan in this he's, oh he's a volcanologist he's oh. a is is that what they call him yeah yeah, yeah is that a thing or uh, is that a that actually is a thing that's yeah. a thing uh, okay the, and then there's something with linda hamilton and her kids yep you know who else is a volcanologist spot yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh i can't remember this is a straight up volcano movie whereas volcano is more it's all about race yeah, it's all about race <laughs> uh but you know like volcano is the volcano volcano is a more ridiculous volcano movie and it's also under la yeah whereas this is like a proper mountain yeah yeah this is in washington this is essentially mount st helens or whatever it is yeah but these movies came out within like two months of each Mm -hmm. other and this one came out first right and i thought this had a really interesting story they he has to he predicts that it's gonna blow nobody listens to him right and uh, he has to go rescue uh, Linda Hamilton and her family and grandma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gra- grandma. <laughs> you know what scene I'm talking about? Nope. I just like your giggles. You know what scene? <laughs> no. There's, they're, they're, stuck. they're stuck in the middle of this, this, uh, this pond or lake or whatever. And they have to get to – it's not even in the middle. They're like, I don't know, six feet away from the shore, right? The only problem is – the water has turned acidic. Ah. It's total like hydrochloric acid. Oh, no. They can't go anywhere. And the boat's melting. Oh, no. So grandma has to get out and swim and walk through <laughs> the thing. <laughs> and her legs burn off. That's oh, awesome. <laughs> Does the top half of her stay alive? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't think that's how no, science I mean, works. Not, not for long. Okay. So okay like, yeah. Long enough to say goodbye. Oh, but yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 And, awesome. and to tell, tell them where the gold's hidden. What a badass grandma, man. <laughs> She's like, they're all arguing. Like, what are we going to do? What are we? She's like, oh wow yeah wow it's awesome that is awesome yeah. well, she was probably closest to death anyway <laughs> if yeah, anyone there's... had to sacrifice themselves there it should be grandma yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's probably a character they wrote in after twister because it was the you know the, <laughs> you know the granny and twister he's <laughs> like oh i can take on these tornadoes myself it's no big uh on to dead man uh, yeah. barrett go go off man here's the jar moosh. i've i've seen dead man actually seen most of dead men because me and my brother fell asleep during it i don't blame you uh but we woke up at the the beans eating scene oh, okay and we're woken up by billy bob thornton going shut your goddamn mouth and eat your beans <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he said that several times in that scene uh have you seen this yeah but just the once like back in the day like, yeah when it came out as soon as it came out on home video it would have been when i watched it this is a uh before broken flowers probably jim jarmusch's uh most accessible movie maybe that's um, saying something though well maybe actually ghost dog is is his most accessible but um it's uh johnny depp in one of his more nuanced performances which is saying something too um it's it's all about this guy william blake and uh, he's actually named William Blake, and uh, he kind of Philip Marlowe's himself around. Like he he ends up with the prostitute, and her lover comes in and shoots her, but the bullet goes through her into him. Mm-hmm. And so he's wandering around, essentially waiting to die because the bullet is too close to the heart to get get out. Like Tony Stark. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He needs an arc reactor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he's got a nobody. It's uh, this Native American guide uh, who's named Nobody. Mm-hmm. and he kind of helps him he knows he's going to die so he wants to help him through his journey and he wants to go to the the uh the pacific ocean to send his body up and uh there's all kinds of stuff about him being wanted and all that stuff uh for for killing the the lover and all that they send out bounty hunters which is the iggy pop and billy bob thornton stuff and uh it's just it's yeah, very slow i understand why you fell asleep but it's beautiful and it's got a wonderful story great companionship great dialogue between depp and and nobody uh this is a high recommend for me mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right and you may have to take carry this next one too death note Ooh. didn't you see death note uh, who's this this is the manga thing that uh, was on netflix that was so divisive because they they made it a couple bad. years ago yeah 
Well, they made it different. <laughs> I did not see this. No, you did not. So, Death Note. Uh, this came out on Netflix in 2017, I think, and instantly everybody either loved it or hated it. Yeah, I remember this because people were super like into this. I'm going to say manga. I don't know if it's manga or manga, um, but people were really into this, and they apparently did it very differently. Mm -hmm. um, who did this uh, movie? Adam Wingard. That's right. The oh, guy. yeah, that's right. And he, he had a very different play on it. Uh, but I found this super enjoyable. Like, uh, the, the premise is that this kid ends up, this high school kid ends up with the ability to write somebody's name on a, on a notebook, and they die mm -hmm. in hilariously spectacular ways. Um, uh, Lakeith Stanfield is in this. Uh, Nat Wolf is the uh, the main guy, and Margaret Qualley is the uh, the other girl. And uh, Willem Dafoe plays the creature. Is Margaret Qualley Andy McDowell's daughter? Yes, Andy McDowell and Paul Qualley. Yep. But yeah, it, I enjoyed it. It wasn't. It didn't blow my balls off or anything mm -hmm. like that. It just kind of like tickled. Them. Well, <laughs> Jesus. I, I would totally I watch it again. I expect demand my <laughs> balls to be blown off when I watch a movie. I just, that's that's why I didn't like Endgame. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I enjoyed it. I didn't get all the the hype, but I wasn't familiar with the source material mm. either. So yeah, then we have based on Michael Crichton's best selling novel, Disclosure. That's right. Uh, oh, where it's... women of power use their power to get men to sleep with them. Demi Moore and Michael Douglas in this one. You remember yeah, this? She's an ex lover. Hired by his company to take the job he thought was going to be his. A lot of movies open this way. It's I'm t I'm due for a big promotion. I go in to get it and I find out they just hired Demi Moore. Right. Um, and she comes on to him. He's married now. I think he's even got kids. And she comes on to him late one night when everyone else, of course, everyone has left the building except these two top executives. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, and he turns her down, and she gets mad. Mm -hmm. And accuses him of basically sexual assault, mm -hmm. and then well, sexual harassment, right? Sexual harassment, yeah, although, because although it's 1994. Sexual harassment was what was yeah, in. that was the shit. Well, yeah. and it's and it's not like to be clear, she's not accusing him of having sexed her, right? She's accusing him of offering her something, offering her sex for something, mm -hmm. and she's claiming she turned him down. So he's got to fight that, and of course, ultimately, it's much more about like this, like early early virtual reality um software and there's like a climactic <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> scene of michael douglas in vr goggles walking through a gilded hallway file of file cabinets oh looking my for God. some kind of document i forgot all about this you remember now though don't yeah. you it's like there's dum, 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 thumping music and he's like walking through like i don't know it looks like mist <laughs> but this was this was sort of a would you consider this like would it if this movie were to come out today and by the way it wouldn't um no. would you consider this sort of a, a guy's answer to me too like like michael crichton was sitting there like i'm tired of like all these accusations of women say, saying they're being sexually harassed when there's guys out there who have the same problem. I'm going to write a book about this. Do you think that was his intention? The cynical side of me says that probably. Mm -hmm. The non-cynical side would say like it, it's more of like a what if type of scenario, yeah, right? Yeah. Like no one had even really thought about you know how it would work if the tables were turned, mm -hmm. right? And it's really well done. Uh, now it's probably dated. I haven't seen it in a long time, but uh, Barry Levinson directed it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think this is a, a a topic worth exploring. You're right. It wouldn't, and it probably shouldn't come out today mm -hmm. because it would be seen as undercutting this. Yeah. And it probably was at this time which, too. Which is kind of what we went through that summer preview that Brian Banks movie. Oh yeah, where he was wrongfully oh, accused. Oh right, right, right. And, yeah, yeah. And even though that's true and everything, it still comes in at a really bad time. I yeah. think. Yeah. Like it's just not a good time for that kind of movie. Aren't to they out. making? Aren't they doing? Aren't they doing indecent proposal again and swapping the genders? I don't know for sure. It you know what? The familiar. fact that you brought that up makes me think. That I yeah, swear to God, are. I read that they're going to do it. Only this time, it's going to be a rich female that offers the money 
to sleep with the husband. I swear to God, I read that. I think uh, I think you're. I'll right. do show prep on that portion. <laughs> the uh, show research. Uh, Roger Ebert review. The Roger Ebert review of Disclosure said it's basically a launch pad for sex scenes. <laughs> I actually, I didn't you enjoy this movie? I mean, I I liked it okay when I saw it. Yeah. Um, I have seen it again re- more recently in the last handful of years, and you're right, it's dated as hell in almost every regard, but especially the virtual reality. <laughs> Did you like this one? Uh, I don't remember, man. I, I was I, I was 17. I was way too young to watch this. Uh, you mentioned the uh, music. The music was done by Ennio Morricone. Really? Wow. Holy wow. shit! <laughs> what a weird group. Of people that came together to that do this like movie. That was like the other day I was watching The Thing, the John Carpenter thing, and I just always assumed Carpenter did that music. Because mm. it's got that... He didn't? Dum, 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 it's, no, it's Ennio Morricone. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's like one, wow. Of the, one of the only movies that he doesn't do his own soundtrack wow. on. Wow. I guess if you've got the chance to get Ennio Morricone, yeah. you do it. But Okay, here you go. Indecent Proposal, remake of Hit Thriller in the Works. Indecent Proposal, blah, 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 directed by blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't need six paragraphs about the first Indecent Proposal <laughs> movie. Buried a lead here. Anyway, I'm at least right that they're working on a remake. I'll, I'll double I check mean, the gender swapping. I don't, what's weird is that Indecent Proposal, the original, holds up a little bit better than you would think. Hmm. Because they talk about this a lot and it's not like she's not giving consent or no or not they, aware mutually, of it. they mutually decide it's the right move yeah yeah and uh so, which is way ahead of its time i think maybe uh then we have disturbing behavior i did Yay! see i did see this i don't remember much about it other than it's people who get sort of like are they possessed or they're they're fried they're they're programmed they're brainwashed uh, okay yeah 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 katie holmes yeah katie holmes katie yeah. holmes and 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 with like a nose ring and yeah all that and the the i remember the trailer a lot because it had the uh harvey danger flagpole set a song oh, yes. oh paranoia paranoia yeah, yeah. everybody's coming to get me. yep oh uh, this is this is almost this is not to the level of varsity blues for me but this is right around there and it came out i think the same year man uh it's it's fucking of watchable all as hell of these because there was this whole batch for about three or four years when kevin williamson and scream hit it big so mm-hmm. we had teaching mrs tingle yeah we had disturbing behavior of all of them the faculty is still the one that i like the way you just talked about this movie mm-hmm. i saw disturbing behavior once and i thought it was forgettable this movie was directed by your boy david nutter oh yeah the game of thrones guy yep wow <laughs> that's crazy what a what a what a what a ride to uh you know this ma- movie, uh, ser- do you remember much about this movie no no, no i James remember the Marsden, guy isn't yep. it? well and the kid from nick stall terminator three yeah yep. nick stall yeah um, it's it's okay it's like a stepford wives type of thing where they're programming the kids to be basically good right good yeah, yeah. in fact is that bruce green yeah bruce greenwood's in this yeah um and they have like superpowers too yeah and so nick's uh james marsden is the new kid in town and he meets the outcast katie holmes and nick stall <laughs> and together they must you know break up this cabal and it's awesome and it also has one of the craziest forgotten one hit wonders of the 90s the flies who did a song called got you where i want you oh yes and for this soundtrack and that song fucking rules that it song does. is awesome I just, I, my brain thought it was an allison chain song <laughs> oh i know why because the dude wears the same glasses as lane staley well i also think that the voice and style of music got you well i could see, I could see yeah, allison chains covering that yeah it's a fucking awesome song it is yeah. a good song but yeah there's a there's a there's a scene in there where i I, what what makes them malfunction is it just the their general desires and things of that nature no, they were bred without lysine ah uh, bred without lysine <laughs> yes <laughs> what uh, makes him malfunction at the end like because because the one girl is like she I, she wants i guess she wants to have sex with uh james marsden or somebody yeah. like that and she's like she's like no bad and all that she starts hitting her head yeah. up against the thing yeah yeah and so, is that what triggers it or is it is it they are if she already at she's that already been programmed yeah she's already been programmed and then anytime you go outside of that programming mm-hmm. then then you malfunction mm-hmm. and, and and that and you become the happening yeah <laughs> <laughs> but this is a fun the color palette i guess maybe a lot of this is david nutter but like the color palette the the music uh the performances are whatever but katie holmes is pretty yeah 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 
Um, <laughs> you should watch this again. <laughs> then there is Double Jeopardy. This is Ashley Judd in the middle of her, like, mystery thriller, like, just... It's it, it's hard to actually distinguish a lot of these movies. She made like five of them. Yeah. Um, this is Bruce Greenwood again. Yeah, Bruce Greenwood. <laughs> uh, this one is the the rule about double jeopardy. You can't be tried for the same crime. And like she is, a, I think she is accused and goes to jail for killing her husband. Mm -hmm. And her husband faked, her, faked his death. Mm -hmm. and then inside inside jail she finds this out and the one woman's like you ever heard of double jeopardy honey <laughs> 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 means you can't be tried for the same crime again and so it becomes like her, her trying to ki really kill her husband this time she does too doesn't she oh yeah 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 i like this one probably more than any other of these this is ashley judd movies yeah i it's watchable mm -hmm. it's pulpy and this is one of a string of four or five Ashley Judd murdery mystery movies. Mm -hmm. It's also a string of Time of the Jones is on the trail of someone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they all, it all culminates here. And this one, because she made high, high crimes. High crimes. Um, the, there were doors, there were walls. <laughs> kiss uh, the girls. Kiss the girls. What was the, the one with Michael Pitt and uh, the, the two kids? Oh, that's paint by numbers. That's uh, murder by numbers. Mur or, yeah, murder by numbers. That's Sandra, <laughs> Sandra Bullock. Bullock. <laughs> that's not that's, that's not her we just it looks really different <laughs> that's so silly um <laughs> but this movie ends in new orleans right i could have we could have talked about this back in louisiana and got it out of the way because <laughs> i think that's Was where it? he goes after he fakes his death is he sets up a new life in new orleans mm. and she goes down there and interrupts wow. some party. and i'm not that's sure true. if desire the beholder also follow this pattern i have the, she's in that too probably See, that was a Ewan McGregor movie. Private Eye Shadows, a female serial killer of men all over the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's the same sort of deal. And she and she was in a lot of movies with, uh, yeah, like Morgan Freeman around this time. It seemed like Morgan Freeman popped up in a lot of these. Yes. Well, uh, because he's in Kiss the Girls and High Crimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even though they're not, that one's not, um, it's not connected. Not part yeah. of the same series. And when, and when she couldn't get these roles, when she was too busy, she'd send Sandra Bullock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Murder by Numbers, by the way, is not bad. It's not, I remember it being it was very watchable. Completely, like everybody blinked and it just went away, but mm -hmm. it's watchable. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah. Gosling and Pitt like uh, kill somebody, and then Sandra Bullock's the detective, and and they think they've made they've done the perfect murder, but they're kids and they make a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. oh, I forgot Ryan Gosling was in that. Mm -hmm uh they she and ryan gosling were dating during that movie Woo! he's much younger than her <laughs> yeah go go her yeah. Yeah. Go <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we have oh this is an all-time excess package oh yeah, yeah oh, i saw it once I, I never seen it again oh really oh man it was terrible i remember a it scooter i remember not laughing and Benicio Del Toro and Alicia Silverstone. That's all I got. Yep. <laughs> There's not a lot of laughs in this movie. She sort of, I think she fakes her kidnapping mm -hmm. with him. And I can't remember the arrangement there. He accidentally kidnaps her. He accidentally kidnaps her. Because he's a car thief. Okay. And she's she's in the trunk waiting to be actually kidnapped. Yes. Yes. Um. And yeah. And uh, I remember the trailer for this too. I think it had a third eye blind song. In Sounds about right. Song, yeah. yeah. Um. Yes. I want something else. Yeah. That's, uh, That's their big. Send me time. Hunt Simi yeah. Send me time. Life. <laughs> There's no way to Carl pronounce it. Life. Yeah. <laughs> Semi charm life was playing in that, but uh, yeah, excess baggage is awful. <laughs> Dude, uh, there's nothing to feel up until you break it one time. And I bumped again. And I bumped mm -hmm. again. That was one of the most like, uh, like silence bleeped pop hits ever. Right? Because. Because he sings half those lyrics are about crystal meth and drugs, and if you listen to like, to the, why are you looking at me like that? Like you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm mentally going through it. That's what it sounds like. I don't like think I've ever sings. known what those lyrics were. That's that because it's all it's all silence bleeped instead of like beep bleeps. They bleep it with gaps of air. Yeah. And so it sounds like he's singing in another language, but he's say, like singing doing crystal meth. Blah 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 blah. Like, <laughs> but it does comes he actually out, literally say crystal meth? Absolutely. One hundred. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. I can't believe that I'm informing you of this. <laughs> I well, I never really explored that. <laughs> Man, really. yeah, he says, I took a hit, 
because I was living, that I bumped again, that I bumped again. Like, it's all about drugs. No shit. The so I guess I've only heard the radio edit. Yes. And I thought he was I just garbled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a point where... That's it, fucking hilarious. Point yeah, in the middle some point that, later, you look him up, you're going to make mind blown. There is a moment during that garbled <laughs> thing where he's like... Uh, and it, it, it where it does the silent thing on the radio edit where it's like uh, coming over you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, it's some wow. dirty ass lyrics. Wow, yeah. weird. And we were all just going do 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 do. It's like it, it's almost like uh, pumped up kicks, right? We're exactly. sitting there oh, like yeah. sitting there singing that. Oh, that's nice. That's about. That. It took them like a year for the radio edit to realize what's going on, and then bleep out the gun part of yeah. that. They're like, oh shit, yeah, we should probably not uh, <laughs> not do that. Yeah. yeah. A uh, surprising movie that I haven't seen is the Fabulous Baker Boys. Oh, okay. Oh. So I watched this. I've seen this. Mm -hmm. This got s lots of love when it came out. And I did not like it very much. Why but, not? But because uh, I was 19 and probably not ready. Like, yeah. I wasn't ready to sit and watch a movie about feuding lounge singing brothers <laughs> fighting over the same woman. Yeah. Um, if I went back to it today, I bet I would appreciate it a lot. But I haven't. I only saw it the one time and it moved really slow for me. That's interesting. It, interesting thing about this. Steve Clo Stephen Close wrote and directed this movie and. And he is known for primarily screenplays. He did not. He's only directed three movies. Oh. One one is Flesh and Bone, and another one is upcoming. But uh, he did the screenplay for Wonder Boys, and he did all the Harry Potters. Oh wow! Uh, mm. And then the Amazing Spider Man. Huh. Uh, so yeah, that's what he's best known for. But he did that movie, Fabulous Baker Boys. I really liked this movie, mm -hmm. even even when I was young. I, I guess just because the music, I really liked the music. Mm -hmm. They they are lounge singers, but the stuff that Jeff Bridges does, this is Jeff and Bo Bridges, and the stuff that he does is a little more like edgy, and he wants to go off on his own and do a solo thing. And, and Bo is kind of the the less talented, very probably very close to reality, but you know emotionally supportive and like is the businessman and stuff like that. And then Michelle Pfeiffer kind of comes between them because she she comes between them i think professionally because i think he's married Bo is married um but jeff bridges falls in love with her and that's a whole thing uh but she she's got some really beautiful images of her draped over the piano mm -hmm. this is of course perfect michelle pfeiffer what is yep. this 19 probably for me uh, was yeah. i didn't really buy those two guys as brothers yeah, that is an issue. Yeah, <laughs> that is it's really issue. it's yeah it's strange too. So strange. <laughs> um, no, this is a this is a big recommend. Got uh, nominated for four Academy Awards. Sure did. Yeah, and yeah. I remember it being talked about a million times yeah, when was I was twelve a huge years old. Deal. Yeah. Uh, then there is Fear, the Mark Wahlberg, wow. Reese Witherspoon. You know, if you're buzzed or on some kind of light drugs, mm -hmm. this movie is great. <laughs> if you if you watch it sober like everything is too exaggerated everything like marky mark is too evil out of the gate dad is too overprotective and distrusting of marky mark out of the gate isn't he doing crystal meth with uh with Alyssa milano or Alyssa milano or, or crack or something like yeah, that in one of the first scenes yeah, yeah yeah well and he's there's one scene where he like picks up a girl in panties and throws her over his shoulder and <laughs> walks her back to a bedroom to yeah, have sex he with is her. evil <laughs> he's terrible evil and and and, you know, she's Reese Witherspoon is too young to make this movie <laughs> and play this character. It's really hard to watch because I don't I don't know how old she was. No, when she she made was this. 20. OK, so then that well, she looked young. for 20. Yeah, she's super young in this, but she's 20 years old. The oh, uh, the yeah, the the only only thing I remember about this movie is the roller coaster scene. That's Ferris wheel. Yeah. Ferris wheel. Ferris wheel. I don't oh, even remember yeah. what ride they were on. Yeah. Well, cause you don't need to. Yeah. <laughs> cause not what it's oh, about. Yeah, he's, is that what he does? He's yeah. fingering her. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. You, you remember the let me in the house thing, right? Yeah. Let me in the house. Let me in the fucking house. Oh, it's fucking great. That's, it's a really good image because he's, is it, who's the dad? Is it William Peterson? It is. Yeah. <laughs> William Peterson, I forgot. Is that right? I, I, know, I is. totally get no, it. No, it is. It is. It's just, I, I was expecting you to go into your manhunter. <laughs> no, he's looking, he's like a security expert or something like that. And he's looking through his, his thing and Marky Mark's standing there like, you know, just rocking back and forth. He's like, I just want to come in. So let me in the fucking house. Yeah. 
<laughs> God. Uh, here's a here's a guy that we're gonna have to end up doing this uh, run down the list of movies he's done. James Foley directed this. And, oh wow! And he he did Glen Gary, Glen Ross. He did at close range, but he's also got stuff like Madonna videos, and he's got uh, Who's That Girl in there? I like that movie. The Twilight, not Twilight, but the Fifty Shades of Twilight movies. Oh, that's and, right. Uh, <laughs> Fifty Shades of Twilight. <laughs> What is Fifty Shades of Twilight? It's Fifty Shades, 50 Shades of Grey. Oh, there, sorry. But there's, but there's. <laughs> no, I thought there was a parody. No, that was they're essentially that. Twilight. But uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, he did, he did a couple of those too. But you go down his list, and it's like, huh, huh, <laughs> what? Uh, then we have First Blood. This oh, is good movie, Rambo. You know what made me watch this movie? What the Sin Cast yeah <laughs> when we were going Seriously? through the best of the year i had never seen it and and i had foolishly filed it with the other rambo movies i had seen wow and you guys started talking about this is not like rambo like yeah. this is more like a man in the woods setting booby traps and i was like fuck me i need to see it it's awesome man i loved it it's crazy how 80s excess got to this franchise immediately like, yeah like that like they they did this first movie which is a nice sort of small kind of adventure movie and then then it's like the 80s oh yeah let's come on <laughs> Kool-Aid man. Yeah. came in and suddenly was like let's make this yeah, bloody action picture what a weird thing because yeah they like juiced him up like they they it, <laughs> it's like they inject <laughs> No, I can't say. It. They say it's they, like you inject a pork butt before you barbecue. It. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it's it's so much so that they don't even call these movies First Blood anymore. Right. They call them Rambo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it fucks up your Blu-rays when you're trying to put them in alphabetical back order. It, sure it does. does. I hate that shit. <laughs> Did you see the guy who took all three of the new Star Wars posters: Force Awakens, The Last Jedi? and rise of the skywalker put them side by side on twitter and said this is going to bother me the rest of my life because the rise of the skywalker title is like a half inch further up than the other two <laughs> yeah. movies yeah, yeah. So if you look at all that's three awesome them in a row, it's just out of line <laughs> <laughs> anyway. wow no first blood man is is totally different it's almost like how rocky went right mm -hmm. like rocky one and two at least they made it to two before they went over the top yeah um it, it went i mean crazy for, for sure the 80s got to rocky too yeah. you know that <laughs> but uh rambo yeah the first blood is like surprisingly emotional like uh there's got some great action mm -hmm. you've got a despicable brian dennehy is that the yes uh, because uh, Richard Crenna, yeah, Richard, yeah, Richard Crenna is the, journal, yeah, the his, general, his friend. Uh, but yeah, Brian Dennehy is a, a a small town Washington cop that will stop at nothing to get John Rambo. Yeah, like uh, even after like one of his dudes, one or two of his uh, guys got killed. Like he's like he, the FBI and the uh, the NSA and like the fucking military. You guys stand down. I've got this. Yeah, yeah. but uh, but yeah, it's it's so it's good. It's uh, it's it's still got some seventies vibe to it. Whereas mm -hmm. yeah, then it gets first blood part two. Holy shit! <sighs> it gets to the point where you know I'm sitting in a theater in New York in 2008 watching that Rambo comeback and have an usher like doubled over like going yeah. oh. <laughs> Oh, it's so completely different from what it started as. Uh, then we have Free Willy. Mm. Oh, confession. Yeah. Never saw it. I I did see this. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, if I haven't seen it, then I've seen it, right? You've seen it. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, kid sees a uh, killer whale and wants to free him. And that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The, it's uh, did it. He. I'm trying to remember. He does he get caught by like Sea World or a Sea World type of thing, or does he jump into an area where he's in danger and they need to get him out? I can't remember. Oh, I don't it, know. I mean, obviously he ends up at Sea World, whatever equivalent, regardless. But I don't know if it was accidental or if yeah. it was uh, on purpose. And then you know he has to have that whole you know they the kid has to find a way like you know late at night to infiltrate the 
the place and get him to jump over and there's the iconic shot of the whale jumping over him as water sh- water cascades down upon him and it's like oh willie is finally free we finally got to the- roll the michael jackson, roll the a- michael jackson i mean it's a beautiful song. shot he is trapped and sent to an amusement park uh, it's okay. a beautiful shot and while i know and i like that michael jackson song i can't hum a bar from it i i've, I've forgotten hold it. me <laughs> like the river jordan oh is that it yep oh. then i will then say okay you now, now i got friend. it yeah that's a- that <laughs> 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 uh, it's, a nice, it's a nice it's okay movie. yeah it's fine uh then there is i never saw this i remember seeing the trailer uh gold diggers the secret of bear mountain mm-hmm. anna klumsky and christina ricci yeah and, i've seen it <laughs> yeah yeah i i remember uh seeing the trailer because i was like I was like, because I I only knew Anna Klumsky and Christina Ricci. I think I, I'd seen Casper before this, but I would only remembered them as little girls. And then yeah. they, and then they're like now they're like I think they're like sixteen in this mm-hmm. movie or mm-hmm. something like that. But um, but no, I never got I never saw this. Did, so you saw this, obviously. The, I mean, the only reason I'm their same age, I think. How yeah. faithful to this original is the Kanye song? it's fucked up on every level (laughs) they're both called gold diggers (laughs) jesus christ uh no i had huge crushes on anna klomsky from my girl Mm -hmm. and then christina ricci had not done adam's family at this point no she had when was Adam's Family? Was it Adam, 93? Well, 94? the first Adam's Family was like 92, maybe even oh, okay. 91. The Adam's Family Values was 93. Oh, okay. So that's that's where I really... I think Adam's Family Values is where I really fell in love with Christina Ricci mm-hmm. because she's so horrifying in that, yeah. in that movie. I actually almost like the second one better than the first Adam's Family. It's It's... It's pretty yeah, good. I yeah, I actually don't. I, I I think I can't remember. I think it's Adam's Family Values that has the part where the kids are like talking about the the babies come from storks and everything, mm-hmm. and then it and the camera just zooms in on Christina Ricci and she's like, "Our parents had sex." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's that one, and it's got the great Peter McNichol and uh, uh, Christine Lati, whatever. I think name. it is Christine Lati. Yeah. Um, at the the camp where they they take over the Thanksgiving, you know. Eat me. Da, da, da. He's a turkey. <laughs> anyway, I watched this because I had crushes on them, and they're gold diggers, and they explore, and they mm-hmm. they find treasure. Do okay. they yell? They call anybody a measly skunk? Mm. Like the old gold prospector, <laughs> Buster Scruggs. Yeah, they. they <laughs> you measly skunk. <laughs> I need to watch that movie again. Yeah, you probably do. I think you were thinking of Christine Baranski. Baranski, that's right. Oh, they actually are very... I mean, I could get those two confused, yeah, too. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, Harry and the Hendersons. John Ooh. Lithgow. Yeah. Uh, they. It's a Bigfoot story, but it's comedy, and it's uh, they, they take him in as a pet. And... He's a people. <sighs> He's a people. Yeah, I never saw it. You Did never you saw this? No, it looked... You know, I even, no matter how old I was when this fucking shit came out, it looked dumb. I knew, I knew it was dumb from the get-go. I was 10. I saw it. Oh, yeah. I watched this a lot. This was one of the VHS rotations. Mm-hmm. You like I, it? I, I haven't seen it since I was 10, bro. Well, I mean, this is, I think, because Rick Baker did the effects. Mm-hmm. I think it actually got yeah, I think it won. Uh, yeah, like an Academy Award for it. Um, I bet you, in some ways, this is very extremely crazy dated. And in some ways, like the creature effects, I bet it's not. I bet you're right. Um, I bet you're right. But they uh, they did a spinoff TV show that I never saw. Oh, yeah, I never saw it. It was called Alf. Yeah, it's called Alf. It was called Alf. And now you know the rest of the story. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, the most I remember about this is when, is it Lithgow himself or is it his kid that has the classic shoe? Don't it's follow Lithgow. me. Yeah, because, go, go on, get. Don't you see we don't want you anymore? <laughs> <laughs> it's basically like uh, Link and Encino Man and Sean Astin. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. There's always a scene. Go on, there, go yeah. on, get. Yeah, they're doing it to save them. They're yeah. doing it because they love them. It's for your own good. Yeah. Uh, hide away. <laughs> hide away. It's a great. Is this club a Dean Arcoons? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, I think I may have read the book, but I never saw the movie. I read the book and saw the movie. Who's Did you ever see this? Jeff Goldblum and Alicia Silverstone, I think. Uh, and Jeremy Sisto. Remember Jeremy Sisto? I do. Okay, I guarantee you I saw this movie, but I don't remember a thing about it. 
Uh, it's not very good. He is he he dies. Jeff Goldblum dies, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then when he mm-hmm. comes back, he's a fly. He's a fly. <laughs> he's a fly that can see into things. No, he somehow gets Christine con- Lottie is in this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course she is. Of course she is. He can see into the mind of a serial killer for oh, some reason. Excellent. So he dies. Comes yeah, he dies back. for a second. Yeah. How, oh, he just like dies like, and then they clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. This is why Dean Arcoots is always considered like the Stephen King light or whatever, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's because it's hacky. always like it's got this Stephen King like thing, but there's something missing. <laughs> yeah, there's just something. I read a ton of Dean Arcoots. I did too. I did too. Uh, I wonder if day. you go back to it, like how hacky that shit was. Oh my god, no kidding, <laughs> no kidding. Uh, but no, I I don't. I remember this movie coming out. I just don't. I don't think I saw it. Though. Hey, Ray Don. T- nah, Ray Don Chong is in this. Oh yeah, yeah. There All you right. Go. Hey, Alicia Silverstone's in this too. That's right. Uh, uh, I love you, Beth Cooper. One of those movies that I've somehow seen like six times. <laughs> Do you like it? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's uh. So you have um, what's her face? Uh, <laughs> Hayden, heroes. Hayden Penny. Hayden Pinetier. Um. And uh, the guy, the guy who is in love with her, is probably best known for the Netflix series Love. And you uh, liked that show, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, his name is something. Rasps. Paul Rust. Paul Rust. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's one of those where he's he's a he's a dork, and she's the hottest girl in school, and she's got other. She's got her friends are hot too. Well, Lauren London is in this, mm. and. Uh, damn lauren london Mm -hmm. um then uh but uh it's one of those where like they have this adventure and and you know they're running away from her boy her boyfriend who's a a total bastard and it's Mm -hmm. one of those like how did they ever get together in the first place he's such a dick and uh yeah have all these adventures and of course you know by the end of it they actually do fall in love that's right it's one of those type of movies but yeah i've seen it like a lot (laughs) there's a there's a scene in a there's a scene in the locker room where they're all like about to go shower and she basically says come on in or whatever i don't don't know if she says come on in but it's he just decides to do the gentlemanly thing and sit outside while they while they take showers sure in the middle of this adventure they need to (laughs) immediately shower yeah hayden penetier is like like a hobbit right like she's like yeah she's pretty short <laughs> isn't she like four nine or something she's like pretty that? short because there was a there was a thing that someone asked her i think <laughs> don't it, mean the feet i think it was like ellen or somebody who asked her like what is it like i don't know how she asked this question but she she's married to vladimir klitschko yes not, not anymore no not, of course not anymore sorry <laughs> um but uh but like they they asked like how what how how would they how did they have sex because she's super short and he's like so tall yeah but I, I don't know if she asked it directly or she just willingly gave that information or whatever she or is no. uh, she is exceptionally short yes um doesn't seem to have stopped her career though do you know that Chris Columbus uh, directed this movie I did not isn't that crazy that is crazy did you know that Tom Cruise has asked everybody in the cast and crew of the next two Mission Impossible movies to get in shape oh. whoa to the point where even now christopher mccrory is getting up every morning and going to the gym holy shit because it's part of tom cruise's holistic movie wow. making oh thing. my god make it, i mean i don't think i would do that yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i don't i mean i'll just make a movie with a star who's not going to make me go to the gym every day mm-hmm. yeah I mean, there's lots of those <laughs> I, I, well it makes you wonder like what exactly do they have to do to make yeah. to make it make it the right movie well yeah and how does he know who's in enough shape right to continue or who's just going through the motions yeah <laughs> yeah it's like somebody comes in one day and he's like nope nope you did not work out yeah. last night you yeah. had pizza didn't you exactly, <laughs> You're exactly. Fired. that's right so hayden penetier is five foot even right vladimir klitschko is six six good god but no like it's funny i i used to keep up with like 
like who was married to who and mm-hmm. all that and i every time they divorce i don't know about it yeah or they break up like uh, didn't you say andrew garfield and emma stone they're not together or, uh, they haven't been together for a long time for yeah. a long time and i and and i know like a year ago or maybe even less i told somebody oh yeah they're like engaged <laughs> um uh then we have the last days this is about kurt cobain i never saw this oh i haven't either it's not about kurt cobain but it is about kurt cobain yeah it's uh it's michael pitt i think again it's uh, uh gus van zandt did it oh, okay is he playing cobain or just a cobain-esque person a cobain-esque person but like look at this poster like well, that's yeah, how no. cobain i'm is. saying is it primary colors or is it like bob roberts like where we're literally spoofing a real person and we want you to know that or yes he's yeah. literally spoofing a, a real person interesting and it and it, it it it's not good i don't know the purpose of this movie like it it's it's literally the days leading up to where he kills himself mm-hmm. and it's like but then they they change how it's done and like who's responsible and all that stuff and it th- this movie doesn't need to exist that's uh sort of something that gus van sant uh kind of developed over the uh the years with this let's make that story but let's not let's not name like name names and change some things about it so that it's people get it like elephant was that Mm -hmm. uh and i'm wondering because he did elephant two years before this uh whether he was like okay kind of like this style where we do a biopic almost but not it's not those people and we can change know. things about the story if we want to it lost his way man between this and the psycho uh, remake and like yeah that was him with the psycho remake yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? oh yeah i i read something recently that said that he made exactly the movie he wanted to make with that that shot for shot good for him man yeah. he didn't make the movie i wanted like to he make. he wanted apparently wanted to do it before he actually got that out and then goodwill hunting came out they didn't want to they didn't want to do the psycho remake so then he did goodwill hunting and they were like okay you can do anything you want so yeah, it's kind of money he does like have right. you seen that movie more than once the psycho remake i have have you really i, I went on a have weird thing about eight months ago where i watched both of them like four times really it was probably only because they were both playing on regular rotation on some movie channel huh but I, I wanted to, the original is fantastic, and mm-hmm. I wanted to look for differences, and I wanted to try and understand why, and I don't. Yeah. Um, so it's it, not any better. Really, on second view. really, honestly, that's all he wanted to do was just to make it again. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't have any special reason for it being remade. It's so weird. He just wanted to do it. All right. All right. <laughs> sort yeah. of as an experiment he's he's an experimental filmmaker <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and uh, it's like well how will this work you know I still don't understand why he put like little added flourishes in those in that remake like isn't there a isn't there isn't there like cuts to like lightning striking and shit like oh, that yeah i think so. it's like, there's also the the cut to vince vaughn jerking off to, well yeah well, it's the audio mostly that yeah i think well, even yeah, yeah. the original you could probably make some guesses at what's going on but this one is basically like giving you the <laughs> yeah what? <laughs> <laughs> what what a weird do way you think that'll come, you this? think that'll come through I don't, what else am i, I gonna don't do? even know what it you... will not it will not how but... do you do it <laughs> oh man um <laughs> if you do it over here it's been... yeah <laughs> uh okay speaking of jacking off no um there's a i i remember i only remember the poster for this movie life or something like it angelina jolie and ed burns oh the poster is just like completely white oh, and no. she's got blonde hair is this the one where she's a newscaster yep and he some of the life or death she's yep. gonna die yeah and yeah and he's uh she thinks she's movie. gonna die this movie sucks i, I hate this movie yes that's all I have to say about yeah. that. Yeah, this Stephen is a bad Herrick, movie. who did uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and uh, Mr. Holland's Opus, did Ooh. this. Movie. What a weird, yeah, run another that... another weird. Uh, I bet if you go through Stephen Herrick's thing, you'd be like, <laughs> I, you would never know that he did it because I think he's just like a for hire type of guy. Yeah. Uh, Mad Love. I saw this. Ooh, Chris O'Donnell. Chris O'Donnell. Drew Barrymore. Matthew Lillard. Oh yeah. Seattle. I saw, I saw it. Do too. you uh, remember liking it? No. No, no. Isn't it like one of them sick in the head and they run off together? <laughs> She's sick in the head. Yes. Yeah. Is that she crass? Is, I'm sorry. She. Well, it's weird. So this is 1995, 
And she was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, okay. right? Which is a fairly commonly known thing now mm-hmm. uh, because it's it's irrational behavior, it's self-harm, it's uh, a lot of volatile relationships and stuff like that. And I haven't seen this movie in a long time, but I remember it being a fairly good depiction of what that would look like. I've seen it, obviously, many times before. And I think they kind of got it right, but I haven't seen it in a while. If I go back now, it may be just complete, like, you know, over-embellishment and stuff like that. But it's, uh, you know, we joke about how many sick teen romance movies we get these days, but it was going on even back then. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. Not new. And this is uh, Drew Barrymore in 95. Is this before she kind of cleaned up her image as far it's as like well after uh yeah she was i mean she obviously had that the troubled part of her life is like more along the lines of 12 13 14 yeah she she's got really alcoholism drugs, yeah. and stuff uh but but it was i don't i don't even consider that playboy part of her life as part of that wild day i think she she had already gotten over all that by oh, okay that point um yeah, maybe I'm not, wrong. Well, I mean, that's not in itself a, a terrible decision. Yeah, no, you no, can no. celebrate your naked body without being on drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know I that, do it every before day. that, like she was really just I, kind of. I think that she got. I think that she got clean around sixteen, seventeen, somewhere oh, around there, and then then sort of started working her way back into movies. And but uh, yeah, I think that I think that she had pretty pretty clearly gotten past that by the time this movie came out she's so adorable she is i just watched the wedding singer a little bit the other night mm-hmm. i mean she's just yeah yeah i know i want to i want to be with her yeah i know i know i know <laughs> i want to i want to snuggle she's a she's an all-time crush for me too uh then we have mccabe and mrs miller unfortunately yeah. have never seen this oh really yeah robert altman man this is right up your alley mm-hmm. this is right up your alley too jeremy have sorry you seen, you've seen it right which one mccabe and mrs miller no Oh man, this is like a it's Robert Altman, Warren Beatty and Julie Christie doing a western basically. Okay. He he basically takes over a town because they're too dumb to to know what they're doing and she is an experienced prostitute and so they open up a brothel together and uh they have to fend off the outsiders coming in and everything. But it's basically imagine like a really comical subversive western directed by robert altman in his prime okay. that's what this is yeah no no you sold me it's really you sold good. me yeah. uh then we have an officer and a gentleman richard gear lewis gossett jr deborah winger uh i've seen this i saw it maybe five years ago mm-hmm. um i remember richard gear being kind of a dick he is and then lewis gossett jr basically has to knock the dick out of him essentially yeah. <laughs> and uh yes he's like a drill sergeant I think. yeah and uh and so uh that's where you get that whole like uh why are you even here because it's the only place i have to go <laughs> and all that which they made fun of in wayne's world too um but uh but yeah and it's got the the um who is it it's a bob seeger song oh god lovely afternoon of where we yeah. is it seeger or i think is it, it is seeger or is it uh another eagle fly um jesus christ come it's, on no. uh, kanye west kanye west yes. oh it's kanye west come right on um it's joe, Will, it's joe cocker joe Co- it is joe cocker. Yeah, joe cocker and jennifer warns yeah uh but uh, i remember that and yeah deborah it's winger basically bob seeger though yeah <laughs> yeah if you want to yeah joe uh but uh, deborah winger is 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 the is the girl that he needs to to uh like convince or whatever I get, d- doesn't she get pregnant she's pregnant isn't she uh i don't remember the whole scene at the the very end is her working at whatever she's working at and he comes in and and like gets him gets her in his arms and walks out yeah and everything that's the end scene but uh, lewis gossett uh jr won an academy award he did for his uh his uh, dress and, and not iron eagle? And yeah i was about to say not for iron eagle <laughs> well he was nominated for iron, iron eagle four. Oh right, right oh right, yeah right, iron, right, eagle right, right. Four, iron eagle that. four iron eagle four metal planes yes metal pl- <laughs> i think iron eagle, eagle three is called aces right aces iron oh, eagle three <laughs> yeah uh but yeah i don't remember enough about this to really talk in depth about it i really i you know i'd like to go back and watch it because i like these basic training 
movies where you get to slap the dick out of them. Yeah, exactly. Whatever, whatever you gotta do. Uh, but I bet I bet this is also one slapping that's dated as hell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> slapping the dick. Uh, <laughs> then we have The Ring. Yeah. Naomi Watts remake of Ringu. Have you seen Ringu? I have. This is Japanese horror, right? Or yep. is it Korean horror? It's it's Japanese. Um everybody says Ringu's much better. It's better it's better. Uh I know that the you know, in in the ring when you see the deaths, they, they are shocking. Like it's like, good God, what the hell happened to mm-hmm. them and everything. In Ringo, it just somehow it's worse. I don't know what what to tell like it's, you. It's scarier it's, it's looking, scarier or, or, or grosser or just more disturbing. I can't I can't quite put my finger mm. on why. But you know that in the ring, it's not like they're it's like playtime here. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's <laughs> some know? fucked up shit. Yeah, uh, we have uh, the the beginning of the ring has uh, what's her name that plays uh, Peggy Carter's niece. Um, oh, mm. the girl from Everhill. Uh, <laughs> What's that show she was on? <laughs> One Tree Hill. Uh, yeah, I think it's Everwood. Yeah. There's an Everwood. <laughs> but Everhill is better. They should have made that. Uh, is it Andrew Amber Tamblin? No. Or is it uh, Rachel Rachel Bella? Uh, Alpha, Emily Van Camp. Oh, yeah. Uh, she's at the very beginning oh, of this. Jesus. and it's the, the it's funny that her her it's like she's it's not her boyfriend but it's like somebody it's like a maybe possibly date guy gets her to come over and he's like all right i'm gonna pop in this tape and then i'm gonna go <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna out. <laughs> yeah. oh shit you're dead yeah. god damn it yeah <laughs> um but yeah uh you know it's, uh whoever watches the tape uh has seven days to live and unless you unless you show the tape to somebody else and then that's well, the thing right you have to show it to somebody else to prevent you go your own. to the horse killing well on the oh. island on the rain island yeah i don't know what she does at this the is end. uh the end of this one is where she comes out of the tv and attacks mm-hmm. Stephen dorff or no it's uh, it's Steve martin Henry, it's Baldwin? Baldwin, martin henderson <laughs> oh <laughs> i was like i was like you're, there's no chance in fuck are you ever gonna get this because you're at steven dorf it's gonna take a uh, it's gonna take some turning to I, I get this one it was adam baldwin though, <laughs> on the second one um but uh which is terrifying i loved this movie when it came out uh yeah yeah no i still like it yeah i don't i think the ring two is garbage but i do too uh but the color palette is so very seattle right like very gray mm. and um and blue and stuff like that yeah i mean i feel like it's been ripped off a bunch but mm. that creepy long black hair girl climbing out of the tv was something i had never seen before yeah that was also frightening as hell and mm-hmm. that's uh deve chase who's a uh, sparkle motion girl in donnie darko wow so she went from donnie darko to this and now what's she doing i don't know because uh, uh, we talked about she's her like, somewhat now recently. she's like 28 or 29 or something oh i just saw her on something fairly recently stuber <laughs> oh you know what emily van camp was in the ring too not in the ring oh shit well she's oh, well. still on everhill amber tamlin was in was the the first one to die yeah amber tamlin is the is, is the she, first one okay you mentioned sparkle motion she's samantha darko and we were talking about s darko fairly recently yeah so that's what oh uh, i see what you're up. saying yeah. uh i don't see her i don't see emily van camp on one of those shows though she's on she was on everhill <laughs> oh there it is everwood it's it's after the ring too <clears throat> oh wow i didn't know that uh actually no no it isn't it it the it's on the imdb as after i hate the way they do that i do too if it's if the show came out in 2002 put it in put it in 2002 no i got a group of them all together back in 1994 when the show first premiered <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah i mean the 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 original ring i, I do like that mm. well the the original remake ring and then the original ringu is great too so uh anyway uh on to saving silverman which was always going to be the movie that i got drunk the worst on ever nice. was i there no. no i was i was in another state when this happened oh that's right uh oh you told me yeah that's right i was 24 and like and my brother and i went to the store and we were like okay we're gonna have some drinks tonight and it was like uh tequila and rum and coke and all that 
And uh, so I had a rum and coke, and then I had a tequila right after that. He drinks a whiskey drink. He Saving, drinks a vodka drink. Yeah, we're watching Saving Silverman, and uh, I don't know why we decided to rent this movie. have no idea. Uh, but I had four of each of those things that I just... Woo! Holy balls. And, uh, and we <laughs> thought it was the funniest movie <laughs> yeah. ever. Yeah. There's a scene... Oh, there's a scene where there's um they uh, there's a fantasy sequence where I think it's Jason Biggs is fighting somebody in a ring uh-huh. and like and like the guy beats his ass and like the referee comes down and yells dead <laughs> <laughs> and so that was like I was we were like sitting there just like laughing 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 and then the next day I was like. I'm going to watch this movie again sober, and it was just not funny at all. Oh, you didn't like it? I didn't like it. Oh, it's not good, man. Oh, come on. There was an Onion headline, by the way, this this morning that said, Avengers Endgame somehow beaten at the box office by re-release of Saving Silver. <laughs> <laughs> no, this movie is absurd. It's my type of absurd, though. Mm-hmm. Like, it's Jason Biggs. Steve Zahn and Jack Black are in a Neil Diamond tribute band. Yeah. And who's the girl? Whole nine yards. Amanda <laughs> Pete. Yeah. Amanda Pete uh, is, is Yoko-ing I'm their band. I'm amazing you got that from that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and she's Yoko-ing the band. And so Jack Black and uh, Steve Zahn kidnap her. And hijinks ensue. Arlie Ermey uh, gets involved as a, as a gay PE teacher who... Uh, who does it with do uh, with Jack Black? They get together at the end. Oh, really? And uh, mm-hmm. it's charming. I think it's funny. Mm. No, this is a terrible movie, and Barrett is wrong. <laughs> and, Neil, and Neil Diamond uh, shows up at the end. He does. Oh, yeah. I remember Part that, of the reason yeah. it's a terrible movie. What? Come Neil on. Diamond showing up does not make a movie good. I'm not saying it's good because of that. I'm saying it was it was funny and I'll enjoyable. I'll go so far as to say Neil Diamond showing up actually hurts the movie. Mm-hmm. Gauntlet oh, Throne. On. I don't. I I have an irrational like for this. No, movie. I, maybe I, I, I've watched it drunk. I'll be many. honest. I watched it once in theaters, and I hated it. You'd have to pay me to get to, to watch it again. It's very silly. It's oh. very, but it's my kind of silly. All right. Uh, singles. Oh. Cameron Crow. Now, see, this is a movie that you guys really like yeah, that maybe. I don't. I've yeah. seen Singles good twenty, thirty times. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah it's good. It's good. <laughs> um. <laughs> There, there's, there, this is, there's so many things that I do love about this. The, the whole Campbell Scott Kira Sedgwick thing. I think that's like a very real, yeah, it is type of relationship. Um, uh, I like all the like, you know, all these people, uh, sort of looking for love in different ways. You have the one, the one girl who's like trying to go through the, the what back then would have been an online dating service, but this is a a dating service where you actually shoot yourself like in vhs or whatever yeah it's great and an introduction and everything and she goes into that place and it's uh, i think it's is it marissa rabisi is it i can't remember if it's her but there's but tim burton is definitely in the scene yeah, yeah, yeah. and she's like she's like he's only the next martin scorsese <laughs> and uh he's and, hanging back there just like yeah it's cool and there's like all these she has uh, so like like she gets all those hits back from all these guys or whatever who've done the same thing they have the, expect the best <laughs> and uh and there's the guys that there's <laughs> all these guys are just like horrible just like uh the one guy who's like i'm very 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 lonely <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, you know the guy who's like all muscles and everything is sitting there like bench pressing and stuff and he's like he's like man i'm not all about muscles feelings man feelings. <laughs> <laughs> and then it ends up on like uh what's his name uh from uh 30 something or whatever uh peter horton oh peter horton yeah uh where uh you know like he's really the only acceptable one and he's actually a great a great one or whatever and everybody she goes on oh, okay who who do you think out of this group and they're like guy with a bicycle bicycle <laughs> guy <laughs> you know matt Dillon's great in this his his relationship with bridget fonda i think is uh is uh, you know another kind of a real type of thing he's so obsessed with his band mm-hmm. that band is hilarious yes, citizen dick are. yes they well that's are. pearl jam yeah and that's uh so eddie vetter plays the drummer mm-hmm. uh and that's mate and stone gossard i think and uh that's one of my favorite parts of the 
the movie is those cameos mm -hmm. where they're like they're reading the reviews and they're like man they, the band is amazing but the front man is like ah you don't want to read this. yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's, chris he's, cornell has a cameo in this that's, that's chris cornell favorite. has a great cameo it's like uh well, you see him singing in there but the the when dylan uh like puts all that equipment in Bridget Fonda's car and everything, and he starts cranking it up. Chris Cornell comes by and starts, like, <laughs> banging his head to it and everything. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that, that that scene with Eddie Vedder and everything, and Matt Dillon's like, I don't want to hear anything negative. Uh, <laughs> you know, and so, that, so they're just sitting there reading it, reading it, reading it. Uh, but uh, capably backed by Eddie Vedder and uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> he's like, I don't care about that. This negative energy just makes me want to, you know, uh, <laughs> touch me. I'm Dick. <laughs> yeah. How does he explain touch me? I'm Dick. He's just like, you're a dick that it's not about a dick that wants to be. Touched. No, he's, he doesn't even get to that point. He doesn't even explicitly say anything. It's, it's Cameron Crowe. Who's playing a cameo in this play. Like say, what is the, the song touch me? I dick about. And he's like, I don't, you know, I, I think it has a lot of meetings, you know, uh, it could mean that, uh, you know, my name is Dick and you want to touch me. <laughs> touch me. And, uh, <laughs> and, but I think you could see it the other way. You know, something <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, singles, great big, Big recommend for me and i know not a big recommend from you but all-time soundtrack though it is a great. fantastic soundtrack no 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 it's na, uh na, na, it's na, na. god if you had to pick your favorite soundtrack of all time mm -hmm. what would it be hmm like like and i won't hold it to you because or hold you to it because it's spur of the moment but the first thing that would pop into your head what do you think well <laughs> The first thing that pops in my head is Last Action Hero. <laughs> Dude, that's not a bad pick. It's a good, it's a good soundtrack. That's, that's a good soundtrack. Yeah. What, what about you? Well, the first thing I thought was Untouchables, but that's not a soundtrack as much as its score. Yeah, what about soundtrack? I mean, I would probably go Jerry Maguire. Oh, oh yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, Cam McCrow can do some fucking he soundtracks. He can. He and Tarantino both are, are excellent at choosing. Well, I think mine is Pulp Fiction, but I think this is 1A, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Singles is right up there. And it, it caught me at that point in my life, but this is just a great soundtrack. Mm -hmm. It's perfectly paced. Ooh, so I married an axe murder. I had that oh, soundtrack yeah, too. Yeah, I yeah. wore that shit out. Two different versions of There She Goes. One by the Boo Radleys, one by the Lost. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the Boo Radleys one is fucking awesome. I yeah. know it is. Uh, I is, there's a, is, lot, is, is that there's the one, a lot of great 90s. Is that on the one there. at the beginning? The Boo Radleys one? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I need to... Ooh, I got a mission. It's a fantastic yeah, soundtrack. Yeah, I got a mission now. Um... Then we have Sleepless in Seattle. Uh, this movie may have single-handedly been the bridge for Tom Hanks to get into dramas. May have. Like, Philadelphia comes out, I think, the same year. Mm. Uh, but Sleepless in Seattle was the the summer hit. But before this, he was almost strictly comedies with some drama in it. And then it was this that showed more dramatic chops than any other of his comedies. And then Philadelphia obviously took him into that that big Oscar run that he was on. Uh, I love Sleepless in Seattle, though. Yeah, I liked it a lot when it came out. I do think it has... Remember in The American President where Michael Douglas is kind of wondering if he would have won the first election if his yeah. wife hadn't died right before? Yeah. kind of feel that way about this movie. Like, would this have won... The, the romantic comedy sweepstakes that it did if it hadn't painted his character so sympathetically right out of the gate with a recently dead wife yeah no i mean i, I think that's endemic to the story that's my point is that's the whole part of it is but I, i'm jokingly saying they sort of cheated to get a lot of people in their corner early by killing off the wife before the first scene yeah and i think i mean i don't know even if it had been like a divorce thing or or she had left him his interaction early with his kid shows him to be such a sympathetic figure it does but it's that it's that fucking phone call about peeling an apple that is the moment oh that yeah, sells yeah, yeah. that character to every person who watches this movie yeah. and he doesn't have that speech if she's not dead he wouldn't wax like that about his divorced wife she peels those apples now for jim yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey is meg ryan is she dating bill pullman yes mm -hmm. and, and he, she's a stalker He's not necessarily an asshole, right? No, nope, no. He's just he's a regular just, he's dude. He's just kind right? of goofy. He's Bill Pullman. I mean, he's the guy who doesn't get girls. Yeah, I mean, that's that, what his role was in every yeah. movie because he was that in singles. <clears throat> oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it wasn't until uh, 
I watched you in bed at the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> then he finally gets the girl at the end. I want a whole list of alternative titles. <laughs> That's totally what that movie should have been called. It would have made so much money. I watched you in bed at the hospital. Oh, Jesus Christ. Holy fuck. He's the girl in that one. Yes. He's the guy. Yeah. But, uh... But uh, Sleepless in Seattle is sort of the gold standard for romantic comedies. Nora Ephron directed it and was the was on the screenplay for it and everything. And I feel like ever since that movie came out, that was the thing that people were com- trying to compare mm-hmm. romantic comedies. Even when you've got in mail. Seattle's yep. on cable tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just say that you're cooking yourself some dinner. <laughs> She'll come running. You're going to have sex with her, right? Well, I hope so. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like how do you know about that? Like, I don't know. Uh, it's, uh, was it? He's like, oh, the girls, are, she's going to scratch your back is what he yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. He goes, what, what did you get that from? And he's, he's like, it's like, I don't know. There's a, in these movies, the girls are always scratching the guy's back and screaming and stuff. <laughs> like, how do you know this stuff? Cause like, blah, blah, blah. has got cable. That's right. Uh, but yeah, Sleepless in Seattle, it's got a 6.8 on the IMDb, which is, I, uh, I thought kind of low. I actually. thought it would be higher. Yeah. Uh, but oh, this is. You got Meg Ryan going harses, harses, harses. Yeah, harses, harses. Ling-a-ling. every time. Yeah, every time I pass a horse farm on a long drive, I'm like harses. harses oh yeah, my harses. wife and I. This is one of our most commonly quoted lines: is literally harses, harses, harses. harses. <laughs> uh, then we have stakeout. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ! How is the? Well, d- never mind. I don't want to know why another stakeout is not also set in Washington. Oh, I think they moved to Washington, D.C. or New York or something Stake like that. Out. I think I've seen this one. Madeline Stowe's in it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but- and not only... So so Richard Dreyfuss and Emilio Estevez are in this, mm-hmm. and Madeline Stowe is the, the, the mark that they're staking out. And she doesn't fall for Emilio Estevez. She falls for Richard Dreyfuss. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because... Yeah, who who wouldn't? Given uh, that choice, no, seriously. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> given those great they both, range, they of both choices. have mustaches. Too. Right. Uh, I can't. I can't remember what the stakeout was about, though. It's like a drug thing, and there she's of she's the the common denominator between like King Pablo Lopez or whatever it is, and like, and they're the FBI, and they. And they're hiding under the bed while she's undressing because it's the 80s. Well, yeah, and it was Madeline Stowe. Oh, well, yes. <laughs> Madeline Stowe, like, you know, she was a go-to for that those mm-hmm. type of scenes. Um, then we have Tag. Yay! Oh, baby. It's in Spokane, huh? Yes, really? it is. That's where they go back. Uh, That's yeah, where they're, they're from? They're obviously all over the place when they they first get they the band together. They play that song, Back in the day when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. Someday <laughs> I used to dig the da ba da ba da Back in the... Who plays the mom? Is it uh, Nora Dunn? Yeah, it's Nora Dunn. Man, she's got some delightfully creepy... She uh does. moments with uh with uh cheddar bo- chili 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 yeah cheddar bite cheddar bite <laughs> 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 because she like immediately starts flirting with everybody and she's like oh what is that is that weed <laughs> yeah it's fucking great yeah <laughs> i'm telling you why do we like this movie so it's much fun. it's, it's funny. also super well shot it is super well shot it's well shot it's charming it's just it it i don't know it's weird there's a couple different kinds of comedies that aren't great that i like there's this and then there's like office christmas party which is just i think 98 percent objectively bad and yet i watch both of these movies about equal yeah. in terms of how frequently i've seen them yeah i don't know there's something about that grouping john ham doing comedy mm-hmm. he doesn't do enough of that because he's funny in bridesmaids yeah and then he went serious mr serious everything i'll do is did serious. he though i feel like everything he's done has been like the neighbors next CIA the, the Joneses See, that's whatever. The only, that's the only comic comic one I can think of. I think Mad Men and the Town. And... I'm thinking about since Mad Men because he did the Town while he was still doing Mad Men. Yes. So since Mad Men, it seems like he's doing a lot of comedy, right? Maybe. Well, yeah, he's he, he's in a lot of things for sure. He was in Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Uh, was he really? Yeah. Uh, the the he's the guy who. Uh, kidnapped the girls so there's always really yeah they'll they they'll throw him in every once in a while doing something completely ridiculous obviously huh. 
Uh, but yeah, he was in that too. Uh, and then obviously he shows up in Barry for one episode. So great. oh, I didn't know. That. Oh, it's so great. It's awesome. It's a perfect the, cameo. It's in the first season. Yeah. And he's like, uh, "Can I shit in your house?" <laughs> <laughs> sure, you can, John Ham. Uh, then we have Twilight, and we don't need to talk too much about that. But it, it, it. I think Washington is as big a character in that movie yeah. as anything else. Yeah. I mean, it, every every single one of those movies started off with a helicopter shot of going over pine trees and shit. Which yeah. is funny because it was it was shot in Oregon. No, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> but it's Washington as fuck, right? Yeah, it's Washington well, as fuck. I mean, they're very similar geographically in terms of like mountains and trees and. Did you did we say ocean. that that you guys liked the first one a little bit? Well, it, it, has, like any well it has merit. I remember leading up to the first Twilight not knowing anything about it uh i saw it and i watched it with two two girls from the theater who knew about twilight and everything and i actually had a fairly decent time especially robert pattinson has kind of got a an offbeat performance Mm -hmm. in there um it wasn't until they came out with the other ones that i realized how super like they, they took themselves way too seriously yeah. after that uh even though there's things in there that are ridiculous and you could say oh well they know it's ridiculous too it's told very seriously whereas in that first one it seems i don't know they 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 seem to kind of know yeah that this is kind of silly but uh it, it it does have a lot of melodrama in it too but uh it's those next ones that just start i yeah. think start tearing it down if it had just been that i think i could have tolerated just the first twilight mm. but it got uh, it got real bad, real, real up its bad. own ass. Yes, uh, Twin Peaks Firewalk with me, David Lynch's prequel to Twin Peaks. I like this movie. I, you know, I've seen this movie and I've never seen the series. Whoa, I haven't either. Whoa. I know, well, I've seen bits and pieces of the series, but I've never sat down and watched it. Have you no, seen the? Series? I've never seen anything. Really? Um, but yeah, I, I I see what you're saying. I don't know if I like it, but there are things about it I like. Yeah, I actually I think I would like the series. I've just it seems like even though it's only one season before they did the whatever extended thing, mm-hmm. uh, it seems like something I would like, but I just never got into it yeah but i like david lynch yeah uh then the vanishing um i've seen uh both versions of this now but the one that you're talking about is the Kiefer sutherland sandra bullock nancy travis one the other one i can't remember which country that's from denmark, denmark. or scandinavia somewhere it's the in same guy directed both of them that's uh, crazy yeah that's like the reverse Gus Van Sant making Psycho. Again. <laughs> yeah, it kind of <laughs> is. Uh, the first one is outstanding. There's a there's a little bit more with the villain in the original one. It kind it kind of goes back and and develops his character more. Whereas in this one, it's Jeff Bridges, and and it it kind of explores his character. But there's some. It's funny how I I enjoyed this vanishing a lot, but I watched it recently, and there's some things in there that just are god awful. Really, like Nancy Travis at one point realizes that that uh, he's Kiefer is still uh, still in love with Sandra Bullock, and she shows up to some hotel that he's holed up in while he's like doing all the he's still like doing his research and everything, yeah. and she's like got her hair all like like sandra bullock's is and she's like she's like is this what you want is this what you want and all that and i forgot completely about that 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 scene is awful <laughs> well is this a movie worth watching though no it's good it's okay. just that, that watching yeah but that, that there's some stuff like that in there's there, right? there's a little couple things like that in it uh, I kind of want to watch but, it, now. but uh, but yeah, the 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 story is uh, he goes to a gas station and he goes in and, and uh, Sandra Bullock helps Jeff Bridges with something, and before Kiefer Sutherland can come back, she's gone and he has no explanation whatsoever, and so he's obsessed with what happened to her for years. Which the only the only negative thing I'll say about the movie is the movie flogs him for that. Yeah, but that's totally how it would go like you're in love you're on vacation you stop at a gas station 
you go in for a minute and a half and you come out and your loved one is gone forever. You would be obsessed with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. You would oh. never, ever let that go. Yeah. Uh, but the movie makes it seem like, you know, it's been five years. <laughs> yeah. That's he should like, really right. move past totally that. Totally unexplained. Exactly. Thing. <laughs> and uh, I can't remember. He gets on the news or something and the killer decides to give him some breadcrumbs or something or they they she talks him into quitting he gives up yeah and jeff bridges wants to keep it going and he fucking calls him or mails him a letter or something right. and that gets Kiefer all riled up again yeah and then basically nancy travis breaks up with him but only so she can ex machina things later right mm. but so yeah like halfway through this he, this is i don't think this is a spoiler he he does run into jeff bridges and bridges is like you will have to go exactly through the things that she went through to find out what happened to her it's not a spoiler because that was in the trailer that was in the I trailer i remember it vividly you have to experience what she did yeah because he's got he's, that fucked up accent. oh he's got a very strange accent drink this coffee <laughs> it is drugged you know <laughs> and uh, he's a family man he's like a happy family man yeah he's got That's a what makes wife. it even weirder yeah. Uh, it's Dutch, by the way, French Dutch. Okay, uh, all right. Earlier. The uh, I I don't know which one I would tell you to watch. You may want to watch the Kiefer one first. Okay, and then watch the better the better original one after that. I really want to want to watch this. So you guys had mentioned it before, but uh, I just one of those things that slipped under the radar. Yeah, it's good. good uh, then we have Walking Tall, the rock version, <laughs> uh, remake of the Joe Don Baker baseball bat beaten. Which is set in Tennessee. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, they're both stupid. But uh, I remember the, the rock version getting decent reviews when it first came Yeah. Out. Everything The Did Rock does it? gets slightly sort of better a, reviews than it should. I guess it's sort of one of those things where it's like, oh, this is a lot better than I thought it would be. And people start, you know. Yeah. I, I saw it. I don't remember much about it, though. Exactly where I'm at. Uh, and then there is The Wicker Man. Which one? <laughs> the Which Nicolas one, Cage though? one. This is the Nicolas oh, Cage one. Not the bees. Did you watch the? Uh, I the saw other the one? original one. Yes. What'd you think? Uh, original one is way better than this. Well, yeah. Did you like it though? <laughs> yes. Uh, it's it's interesting because the character that the original guy plays, Nicolas Cage didn't need to add any flourishes. No. There's there's so much weird about the situation he's in, and just playing it straight, you're just like you still want to slap this guy. Yeah. Like, this guy's like, what are you doing? Did you not realize this is not normal? Yeah. This is, none of this is normal. And he's playing it. The original guy plays it so straight. Of course, this, this has become a cult classic because of Nicholas Cage's performance and the bees and the bees. It's such a goddamn awful movie though, right? Yes, it is. This is why, listen, I don't have time for this conversation, but I'm going to bring it up. This is why when Mandy comes out and everybody's like, Mandy is Nicholas Cage at his unhinged best. My reaction is, I don't think I want to see that. Yeah. yeah. I think we have gotten to this place where we're celebrating overacting yeah. with one or two specific actors and we think it's good. I don't I know. No. Yeah. And I've seen Mandy and I, I didn't like it. Mm. I mean, it's not it's not really because of him or anything. It's just I just didn't like it. Mm. Uh, Going down the list here, Black Widow. I never saw this has Deborah Winger in it. I never saw that. It's been playing a lot on one of the movie channels. And every time I see it, my brain thinks they somehow got a Scarlett Johansson. Movie <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, big recommend for me. The Changeling, the original George C. Scott. Oh, Ooh, this is good. This has got really it's like a cult classic. Right? This is a really good movie. Uh, I anybody who's a horror fan should watch the changeling I, is, i've actually i don't know how i've missed it ooh, i've never seen it. uh of course there was a movie called changeling yeah, that yeah. came out that clint eastwood directed but that's a completely different movie it's not a remake of this but, oh um yeah. no. <laughs> very different um but the changeling i think there was a, a decent uh a, a director that we know who oh peter medak i I've heard of Peter Mayer. He did Species too. Um, <laughs> Get Carter, the 2000 Stallone version. Yeah, getting a lot of remake action I here. Know. I didn't see the remake. I've seen the original Michael Caine Get Carter. Vice versa for me. Mm -hmm. I saw the, the Stallone one. It's like a slow, boring, rainy version of the Mel Gibson revenge movie, Payback. Oh, oh, that sounds awful. Hmm. Yeah, it's terrible. But that she's Payback all that wasn't all that great. <laughs> In the no, first place. that's my well, point. And that's the that's the thing that they do with in. I don't know about that 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 version, but get Carter. Michael Caine is a whatever he does in this. 
you feel like he's justified for a while but he goes over the line hmm. like it's it, it gives you that story where you're like yeah go and get the bad guys and then you're like whoa well, he kind of went a little bit too far hmm. there and so it's one of those things where there's a blurred line between good guys and bad guys in it. i love that song <laughs> yes i like everybody the, get up <laughs> i like i like the video more um the uh the house that jack built this is that movie that everybody was walking out on right the lars von trier that mm -hmm. came out it's apparently like abhorrently violent or yeah he's a serial killer or something matt Dillon is yeah i still haven't seen it mm -mm. uh and man when i hear people walking out because of it it makes me not want to watch what it. was it a can a can can not con yeah <laughs> it's, only it's only cans it's only cans uh then there's the journey of natty gan i don't know this 1985 disney movie i may have accidentally seen this like it it's a 1985 live ass action Disney movie, so I guarantee you it sucks. Yeah, yeah. This was not an era where live action Disney was like hitting home runs. That yeah. Natty Gan is apparently like a can do. Uh, who did I say it is? Oh, Meredith Salinger, uh, Patton Oswalt's wife. Oh, um, and John Cusack is in this. Well, all right then. I've never even heard of it. Love happens. 2009. Jennifer Aniston, Aaron Eckhart movie also currently playing on one of the movie channels. I have not bothered to stop once because they made a romantic movie with jennifer aniston and eric Eckhart. that's yeah. my thought every time i see it i'm like that look that sounds terrible i mean they're both fine but if it was any good would it be brand new news to you that this movie exists no it yes you're correct and plus it's called love happens yeah, exactly yeah. Fucking, are you kidding me <laughs> stop just stop jesus christ and then there is management we discussed this a little bit on the live pod the live pod uh butt touching another jennifer but, aniston but yeah it's jennifer aniston and there's butt touching there's involved. butt touching steve's on this has I your, yeah, i'm interested you, i'm curious this movie Most, drips with jeremy mostly i was sold with the butt touching yeah. the uh the overboard remake that came out last year is set in washington no look terrible yeah uh, of all the movies to remake yeah and gender swap i wonder if it made anything I don't. I don't think it did. Uh, mm. Then there is the Red Dawn remake, which they had to <laughs> completely change yeah. because they need Chinese dollars. So like <laughs> they changed it. Was it so the f original Red Dawn was that was that China? Yeah. And no, so the, yeah, I think it was China. It, yeah. It, it, I think. Well, the, mm? uh, I thought it was Russia. It, I mean, it, it, it's in the '80s, so it makes sense that it would be Russia, but um uh -oh. maybe they changed it no they changed it to china in the remake um because it is russia in the soviet forces in the 1984 version um but then in 2012 north korea that's north what they korea. did yeah it's easy to demonize those guys everyone hates them yeah except for well hmm. that's what it is so red dawn is is your typical 80s u.s versus russia thing which we'll probably be getting a lot more of in the next decade yeah yep. and then uh this one was north korea yeah uh did not see it uh then there's the stepfather i know it's a horror movie i never saw it yeah this got a lot of buzz when terry o'quinn was on that lost run everybody's like hey go back and watch the stepfather he's well, totally different than Locke. there's also a remake too there's two stepfather movies yes he's not in both of them no i don't think so <laughs> uh then there's things we lost in the fire that's <laughs> the halle berry benicio del toro movie and david Duchovny. Uh, oh uh, yeah things we lost in the fire and reading the description it's even more depressing than the title yeah the title's pretty bad yeah and then there is this boy's life another i mean this washington is filled with depressing movies. no it kidding sure right is. um sure is. what was that tobias wolf yes um i'm trying to remember if i saw this i know de niro and dicaprio are in it oh uh, uh, de niro's great de is he really yeah de niro's i mean DiCaprio got all the love because he was such a young kid, and uh -huh. he's playing this kid who's had to deal with shithead stepfather after shithead stepfather. De Niro comes along; he's the worst of the bunch, but like ends up like being sneaky awesome in this movie because we're all paying attention to Leo and his reaction to it. De Niro's fucking scary. He's scarier here than I think in like Goodfellas. Really? Like he's frightening. So I should watch this movie. Uh, I would definitely no. This it. is really? I know this is a good movie, and I just ha I if I either haven't seen it or haven't seen it in forever. Hmm. 
Uh, but I know this is good. De Niro and, and DiCaprio and everything. It's got 7.3 on the IMDb. Ooh, I gotta watch this. Yeah. And, uh, kind of an interesting, uh, cause, uh, De Niro used to be Scorsese's boy and then DiCaprio became Scorsese's yep. oh, boy. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's gonna, De Niro's gonna be back to being Scorsese's boy with the Irish. <laughs> he's an old boy. Yeah, that's right. An old boy. <laughs> uh okay that'll do it for this episode keep going to syncast presented by cinema sense on facebook uh cinema sense twitter soundcloud uh discord we have a billion places to come and uh talk about this very episode. we really do uh, oh also this month is mental health awareness month yep yes it is and we are partnering with mental health america uh to do a t-shirt sale all the proceeds of which all will go every red cent not Red Dawn, Red Scent mm-hmm, will go mm-hmm. to Mental Health America. They do great work, preventative screening work for mental health. They have kind of a like a chart about uh, where you're at in a, in a mental health potential mental health crisis. Yeah, a lot of resources. Yeah, it's great. Go to our website, uh, cinemasense.com. We've got a page for them. Um, we'll put a tag on on the show notes here and go buy you a T-shirt. They're really cool T-shirts. All of the proceeds go to Mental Health America. Yep. All right. That'll do it for this episode. It's Chris Atkins and Jeremy Scott and Barrett Sherry. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Comment on our episodes on our SoundCloud page. Check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Reddit. And be sure to visit cinemasins.com. I've got me cockles in a in a snit. Cockles. Me cockles are in a snit. Oysters, clams, and cockles. Oh, is that a Fraser thing? No, that's what Arya says when she's training to be a faceless man, and she's selling the oysters, clams, and cockles. What are cockles? Some kind of oyster or clam related companion. Mollusk. Some I think sort it's of I think it's an edible barnacle. Ooh, sounds delicious. Uh, when I was in Florida, I ate a uh, a full pound of crab. Like, not just, like, with the shells and all that stuff. Like, the meat. De-shelled. Yeah. And the guy, the guy, did I tell you this? No. The guy was, uh, I was like, how much are your crabs? What do you have with crabs? And he was like, well, we've got the quarter pound, we've got the, the half pound, and we've got a full pound. And I was like, yeah, let's do the full pound. He was like, uh, all right. You know, that's like sautéed in garlic butter and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, yeah. And I polished those motherfuckers off, like, immediately. My- <laughs> and I wanted... To get back in there and tell him to give me another pound. My wife really wanted pizza, and she's always been, she always favors Papa John's. It's been months since we've had it. It was just this very specific craving. Mm-hmm. But I always order the garlic Parmesan breadsticks <clears throat> yeah. that are buttery and gooey. Mm-hmm. And I never eat more than like one piece of pizza because I just fill up on those breadsticks. Oh, I said to my wife, I said, I bet, I bet just licking one of those breadsticks is 200 calories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then all the sodium, it's like a mild heart attack. There is something to be said about cravings for shitty pizza, though. Oh, yeah. I've had them before. Oh, yeah. Even if you have like good pizza. I When we lived in Chicago, we lived right down from Wrigley. And there's this amazing Fiesta uh, Azteco, uh, this amazing mexican restaurant right on the corner of of sheffield and addison always go there it's pretty cheap got great hot sauce and everything but there's a taco bell across the street Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i'll be goddamned if i didn't hear the siren song of taco bell once or twice and i felt so it's in the shadows of wrigley field i'm like the best there's there's a there's an al's beef down the way there's a portillo's down the way and here i am at fucking taco bell i know it man it's just uh, there's a reason there's a reason I, I properly chastise myself. That's all right. Yeah. And I tried once on the way down here, getting off the highway and turning right, because like half a mile down, there's a Wendy's. That's got to be the worst customer service Wendy's in the history. I swear to God, I thought my burger was going to have snot on it just by default. Which way? You got to go a long way down for a Wendy's. If you turn right after you get off the interstate, yeah, yeah there's a Wendy's Oh, no shit. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, oh, no, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to go to that I didn't one. know. It was on the map. It said Wendy's. I didn't know. I didn't know until I got there. I, I like Taylor's new look. Okay. <laughs> She's got a new kitty. Uh, so what's the deal? Because there was a bunch of cats in that me video. You've seen the me video, right? Yeah, the first two are her cats. Those are I think those are her cats. Her and then there's cats. one that Brandon Urie and gives her. And I think her. that her fans have decided that means she's got a new cat, and that was him, 
her cat. That was that okay. was the cat's moment to shine. Ready for its close up. And you're you're like me with that song, right? It's just like hmm. Yeah, it's I would rather her do that kind of stuff that I can sing along to than the <laughs> Look what, look you, what made you made me, me do. do. Yeah, yeah. Um so there was really only one or two off the last album that I thought were like that. Um so yeah, but I mean it's crazy how many music publications have come out pissing fire all over this thing. What is like, up with that? This is with everything that's wrong with pop music. I saw another headline that said this is exactly what we deserve. Uh, everyone just came out guns blazing for this, but nobody did on the last album, which was much, which much was worse. Bad. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I think it's. I think what it is is residue. They're like kicking themselves for not giving the that last Reputation album a deservedly bad review. Yeah, I guess so. And so they're coming out. But what's funny is this is just, it's just one song. Yeah, we don't know what the sound of this album is going to be yet. Yeah, it sounds like she's getting back towards her, uh, you know, her typical thing. Did you see? By the way, did you see that scene about her like yelling something? like doing a spoken word thing on a yes. lead single. Yes. I didn't realize until I started writing that sin. I was like, hold Every on, she does that. We never getting back together. Shake it off. Like there was like four or five. And I was like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Why does she keep doing this? <laughs> oh, look what she made me do. Is like, oh, the Taylor's dead, blah, blah, blah. And now she's like, hey, kids, spelling is cool. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm going to talk about movies. We're going to talk about something completely different. And uh-huh. now for something completely different. Yes. A man with three buttocks. <laughs> <clears throat> By the way, Wikipedia is a strange place. Because... <laughs> <laughs> what? what is Be- happening? Because... <laughs> that was like a goat boy. <laughs> when, when, I, when I opened up this management movie with Steve Zahn and, and Jennifer Aniston... Yeah. So one of the in the description it says she lets him touch her butt. And butt is hyperlinked. So of course I click <laughs> Did they take you to a Wikipedia entry for butt? There's female butt and male butt. Yeah. Oh yeah. I have a friend that will watch a movie with his wife almost every other night, and he'll send me a screenshot to see if I can guess it. I've talked about uh-huh. this before. It's just a game. I usually get them. Last night, he said, he goes, okay, see if you can get this. And it's literally a picture of an ass. It's like somebody in a movie is like either bent over with massive plumber's crack, or they're actively mooning somebody. But it's right up there. And I said... No, I do not know that ass. <laughs> and he goes, okay, how about this? Next shot, Nicolas Cage in a truck. And I was like, yeah, I've never heard of this movie. And it was something from like last year. Apparently he's no. like Eric Roberts now. He just makes a bazillion movies. But you like tell me the anything. First, thought, first shot you sent me was an ass? I'm not, isn't sure he, know isn't ass. Nicolas Cage still paying off his IRS debt or whatever? Yeah, well, and like he, his castle. Because he bought that fucking shit. castle. Yeah, yeah, he bought everything. He bought a moat and everything. I think It was something. There was a... Johnny Deppian levels of spending. Yeah. There was even a point where uh, before he married Patricia Arquette, she said to do all these different things to impress me. And she thought there was no way that he would do it. And he he ended up doing it. What? He's, sh- he's look at the he pulled up the Wikipedia page for buttocks. Oh, uh, okay. And now he's got. Now I he's can see the, the reflection. I can see the reflection in the <laughs> City of God poster. I felt. Uh, I just had this moment of clarity where I was like, I'm looking up butt. Yeah, yeah, we have a funny job sometimes. <laughs> mm-hmm. I got, I got to stop looking at this. You do, you do, because I, I, whatever you're looking at is right in my field of view. Man, she was sexy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Was she a skexy? <laughs> was she sexy like a skexy? <laughs> she, she was. She was very, very to me more back in these days. <laughs> Well, I'm glad it wasn't me. Jesus Christ. It was inevitable. It was inevitable that one of us would say it. Yes. Uh, On any other day, it could have been.